All right, day 14. Okay, 14, I guess 15 is going back down. Interesting. 14, parabolic reflector dish. The dish is made up of many small mirrors. They're all pointing in slightly the wrong direction. This provides the energy for the lava. Individual mirrors appear to be connected via an elaborate system of ropes and pulleys to a large metal platform. Platform is covered in large rocks of various shapes. Depending on their position, the weight of the rocks deforms the platform. The shape of the platform controls which ropes move and ultimately the focus of the dish. In short, if you move the rocks, you can focus the dish. The platform even has a control panel on the side that lets you tilt it in one of the four directions. The rocks will roll when the platform is tilted while the cube shaped rocks will stay in place. You note the positions of all the empty spaces and rocks. Okay, start by tilting the lever so all the rocks slide north as far as they can go. Okay, support beams on the north are damaged. Calculate the total load on the north support beams. The amount of load caused by a single rock is equal to the number of rows from the rock to the south edge of the platform, including the row the rock is on. Cube shaped rocks don't contribute to loads, so the amount of load caused by each rock is as follows. 10 in this row, 9 in that row, 8 in that row. Okay. Total load is the sum of the load caused by all of the rounded rocks. In this example, the total load is 136. Roll everything north, what's the total load? And somewhat hilariously, 2048 is one of the workshops that I have on Rust Adventure. So I already have logic for doing these shifts and stuff. The only thing that I need to pay attention to here to extend that is going to be where they stop. But basically what I do here in the workshop is I treat everything as a left shift. So I take all the positions and I reorganize them basically so that everything looks like a left shift. And my guess is that's also going to be useful for today. We get away with sorting in 2048 because everything goes to the same side. But we basically manually keep track of these columns anyway. So I think that when we're manually keeping track of the columns, then we'll just be able to set the column to uh, something higher. So in 2048, this is all a jumble of positions, which makes it a little bit easier to organize and move everything around. I do think there's another option and we could use something like ND array if we wanted to, to iterate over everything and keep everything as a matrix. But I don't think we need to because we're never going to have more than like the board tiles worth of elements. So I guess we implement by sliding north. Is this our input here? Just create day 14, make this a little bit bigger. I do work a little bit smaller than I record at when I'm not recording. So we've got part one here and we're gonna drop in our input. So here's our input. I wonder what the best way to store the rocks is, the static rocks, because I wanna store them in a different place. So if we store the rocks in a lookup map, the static rocks, then we need to be able to find them by key. We could give everything an ID and access everything by ID so that, you know, we have this top left uh, rock that rolls and it rolls somewhere, but it always has the same ID. And then we iterate X and Y over the entire thing every time to move everything. I think we have to iterate over all positions right now with a slight change of we can iterate over like from zero to rock or from like rock to rock kind of thing. My guess is we have to do multiple rotations later because why wouldn't you if the platform moves in four directions and there's a part two. So I think we want the board size zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in this case, nine, nine in both. So we'll want that. So let's do input.lines.count for rows and columns is going to be input.lines.next the unwrap dot length that gives us two u sizes of course length is always going to give a u size so lines next unwrap length should give us the column count so we'll stick to do here we'll start testing day 14 part one we get 10 and 10 i guess i started at zero when i counted right zero one two three four five six seven eight nine so there's 10 and 10 so i think we just want a big bag of this stuff honestly and i'll just do bag accesses and we'll create a new bag out of it. So I think we just want the positions of everything. So we can do input.lines.enumerate.map and we get y line and line dot cars dot enumerate dot map x car. I guess this is filter map because we don't want the dots because we don't care. So match C if C is what capital O, then we have an O. We'll make that a rock movable. If we have a hash immovable and if we have anything else, Nothing, none. So these both are some, and we need to create this enum because we haven't created this enum yet. Enum rock, movable, immovable, and then we actually want x, y. So let's do x, y, 
and the value of rock, x, y, value of rock. And I think this is a flat map at the top because we're not gonna collect that inner iterator until we're done. We'll collect out here. This will be a B tree map maybe. That would keep it always sorted in the same. So let's do a hash map just to make it clear. This could be a hash map of ivec twos. I think I'm gonna do that actually because keeping this in my head is gonna be rough. ivec two to rock, stick a to do down here. We don't have hash map in here yet, bring it in. We don't have ivec two in here, which apparently it doesn't want me to bring in. Do I have not have it in the cargo tumble? Uh, probably not. Lamb workspace equals true. So we should be able to get Rust Analyzer to recognize glam ivec2. And then what is our problem here? It is u size, u size rock. I guess these are u sizes coming in, right? How big is our input? Go all the way to the end. That's not that big. Go all the way to the ground. That's like 100. 100 is fine. So it's going to be well within our ivec2. So here we will do as i32. And this could be a u32. But whenever we deal with grids, from my work with Bevy, I've learned to make these I32s so that we can do negative math. I don't think we have negative math to do. I think it's always just going to be sorting, but I32 will still fit everything we need. Item change to U size string slice here. I32, I32 rock. Yeah, that's what we want. Oh, that's because I'm not making an I32 here. Or I'm not making an IVEC here. We can do it like this. And I think these are going to be references. Yeah. So this move happens because this gets generated by the enum, which means it's owned here, yada, yada, all of that. Let rock map equals this. So we've got rock map, which is all of our positions and rocks. And then basically we're gonna have like a move rock function that I, I assume we're gonna have to call multiple times. So let's do FN rock shift, let's call it. And we'll say map. And this will be a shared reference to the hash map that we are using. And I think it'll just return a new hash map, honestly. We're gonna be creating a bunch of new IVEC2s, so we'll just clone them and live with that for now. And we can always go back and optimize. Let's call this rock shift north for now. And this will be next state. And this is gonna be rock shift north. Just to remember that we are doing north. I called this rock map. Let's also call this rock map down here. Okay, so now we're here. And now what we need to do is iterate over all of the columns. So let's do zero dot dot. I guess we need the boundaries here. So let's pull that in as an IVEC2. I guess this can be a shared reference to an IVEC2 because we will always have the boundaries here. It looks like these were both the same no matter what. We do need to explicitly cast these as I32s. It looked like we were 100 by 100, so this will be fine. Uh, zero dot dot to do when I saved does not work. I think this is zero dot dot boundaries dot Y, right? And I'm gonna do a Cartesian product and just touch everything. And zero dot dot boundaries dot X. Now let's do a quick four position in this. We'll debug X, Y. I guess this is just gonna be position, which is gonna be the X, Y anyway. Part, uh, Cartesian product is from iter tools, so we'll bring that in. Rock shift north is in need of the boundaries argument. Shared reference, next state. And then we will debug next state for when we're done there. Uh, we didn't implement debug or derive debug on our enum, so we need to do that. And then that should work. So now we are getting iteration over the Y's first, and then the X's go up. So if we call this X, Y, right, and we debug Y here, we should just see zero to nine over and over. Yeah, zero to nine over and over. So we should be good with that. And now we'll just check basically every position and keep a running log of the position that we are currently dealing with. If we hit a rock that's stable, then we need to keep the next position as the rock in front of that. And otherwise, we'll just do let mute new rock map equals hash map, probably from all of the static rocks, right? We could probably just iterate and create this hash map from those static rocks. Rock map dot iter. I guess we don't need to hash map from here because we'll just have it. This is going to be rock map dot iter dot. I guess this rock map, static rock map will always be the same. So maybe we can do this outside of this function and pass it in. But static rocks equals new rock map, iter dot filter, position rock, match rock, fill match arms, got movable rocks and immovable rocks. If we've got a movable rock, we don't want it. If we've got an immovable rock, we do want it. And we just collect this. And this is gonna be a hash map, IVEC2 rock. Of course, this iterator is an iterator of shared references to IVEC2 and rock. So I guess we didn't implement clone for rock, so that'll be an issue. But we can always just filter map here instead of doing that. So movable is none and immovable is position rock with a sum around it. 
And this is a reference to rock, which we want to clone. Doesn't implement copy, although it should because it's so small. I think copying is fine for enums. And then we get our iterator and we're off to the races again. So now we need to pass in this static map and we'll just keep doing this static map every time in the future. This is a hash map of ivec 2 rock. So let results equal static rocks dot clone. The results should be a map of all the static rocks. Let's get rid of this Y debug and add our semicolons where we need them. Bunch of immovable rocks. Great. I feel like a print grid function would be interesting. So if we print grid, starting to feel like all this information could be in a struct. But if we print grid, we take a map, which is just a hash map of IVEC2s and rocks and boundaries, which is an IVEC2, then we can print line in here somewhere. And we're basically going to do the same thing as we have here, except that's doing Y first and we want X first. So we'll do Y, X. This is kind of, I'm writing this such that um, we're kind of just bouncing X and Y back and forth, but it's fine. I think the, the input is the right size for that, right? I think we always have a perfect square here, so it doesn't matter. So print grid is for this. I guess we don't just want everything. We want specifically rows and columns because it'll just be easier for us to print out. So let's get rid of Cartesian product and do for y in zero boundaries dot y for x in zero dot boundaries dot x and this will be print and this will be print line out here with an empty and this will be print and we will do match i guess map dot get on an ivec2 with xy fill match arms we either have a rock or we don't if we have a rock i guess i guess we'll match on rock here <laughs> so immovable is print hash right and some rock movable is print capital O and none is print dot. We could have implemented display here. I decided not to, I think that's just it. So we don't need the results here and this is it. And then this doesn't exist and print grid should just work. So let's do a print grid to see if that works. This is just the static rocks with the boundaries. They take shared references and that's our rock map. And then print line will show up up here. So does that look like our input? It does seem to, one, two, three, four. I think we're good there. So this is our static rock map. We can always now print out a rock map, match it up against this, see if it's see if it's going okay. Love that. This could be a display implementation, but we don't have a struct on our hash map, so that's fine. Um, rock could have a display implementation though, so let's do, let's do that. Impl display for rock, and then we need to bring in standard format display because that's the trait. And we can implement missing members with Rust Analyzer, which will write this for us. And then we're gonna do write, I think it's F and then character. So we're gonna match on self and self is going to be rock movable, which is going to be circle or rock immovable, which is gonna be hash. And that should work out unless F needs to be last. I never remember. Format argument must be a string literal. So we're gonna do this. So now we have display for rock, which means that we can take rock here and instead of print this, we can just print rock and we should be able to get the same thing out. If we scroll up, we should still get our output and we do. So if we get a rock, we print the rock. And if we don't, we don't. And the rock gets two stringed as one of these characters and everything's great. So what do we wanna do here? We need to check for the first space. So I guess we match on results. No, we don't match on results. We match on rock map dot get. And this is gonna be an IVEC two XY. Probably overkill to use IVEC here because we're going to do so much constructing of them right now. But I'm okay with that because it'll help me keep X and Y straight in my head. So if we don't get anything for the rock map at that position, that means it's an empty slot. If we do get something, that means it's a rock. If it is a immovable rock, then we set the next position to, I guess, IVEC to XY, right? Where it's Y plus one. So that means we need to have a next potentially available position. So we've set the next available or next potentially available position, I guess. And if it's movable, place it in the next position, move the next position forward. And then I think we just continue, right? And then for each loop here, we want to reset the next potentially available position to basically none. So maybe at the start of each row, we do next potentially available position equals X, Y. Uh, if we do that, this is always going to be sum. So maybe we don't handle it as sum and maybe we do zero, zero so that this is always just an IVEC2 and we always have it. A couple of clippy positions. 
This is warning us because we never read it, which we never do, because we need to get it here, right? Next position is equal to that. That's our IVEC2. And then this is equal to plus one, I suppose. I guess we really do want this extra like place to do this. So let's get our looping logic from here instead, because that will mean that we, we iterate over Y and then we iterate over X. And that means we can take this and put it up one. And these need to be flipped because we need to be doing y's first. And this y will always be zero when we set it there. This value is never read, which we're fine with. Results, we're iterating over y and x. When we match on the rock get to see if there's something in that position, if there is something in that position, we just bump our next available by one, which I guess we can mutate, right? We don't actually need to set it to a full new value. And then same here, dot y plus equals one. And then we results insert key value key is going to be next position right value is going to be rock movable so we place it in the next position we move forward and then we continue and if it's none then we do nothing right because we still have the same next available position yada yada so after all this looping we should have results maybe we don't need this static rocks well static rocks is just setting up our results so that's fine so we end up with our next state but we want to print that out with our boundaries. Of course, we are print lining, so I think it's just gonna connect here. Looks like we didn't get our rocks correct there. So let's get our little subtraction there. Okay, so this is our new one, and it looks nothing like what we need, actually, I think. It looks like we're looping over one here. So our rocks, immovable rocks, are not plus equals one. If we get the next position, and it's an immovable rock, we don't just do plus one, we do do the full set here. I don't know why I changed that earlier because I thought it was the same and it's not. So now it looks different, but it's still not good. Ah, okay. So what should this look like? Mostly like that, except I think that we're overriding that rock. So it should be Y plus one in the same X. Now everything is on positions here. This looks correct. Four, one, two, two, one, one. Four, one, two, two, one, 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 two. One, two, two, two. That looks correct to me. So we're getting the right results. It's probably not pretty to do, but we're getting the right stuff. And then what do we need to return from this? We need to iterate over everything and add everything up, right? Number of rows from the rock to the south edge of the platform. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we sum them. So this is for next state dot iter dot filter. I guess filter map. And then we get position and rock. We're going to match rock here. We're gonna sum into a U size because we can. That's supposed to be a tuple. Fill match arms, rock movable. If we have a movable rock, we need some position dot Y. And if we have an immovable rock, we need none. We'll say the sum is equal to that. And then we'll do okay, sum to string. And the U size is an issue because IVEC2, yep, IVEC2. Item changed to I32 here, yes. Sum, oh right, because we have IVEC twos, I think maybe we can't sum into a U size. So let's sum into an I64, maybe. What is the actual issue here? Value of U size cannot be made by summing I32s. That is fine. That's what I thought it was. Now we have I64s though, so why uh, are we hitting the same issue? Value of I64 cannot be made by summing I32s. That feels really weird. Sum I32 is not implemented for I30 or I64. I feel like we're going to need to change that in the next one, but that's fine. Uh, did we put in the answer here? No, we didn't. It's also not 44, which is what I think we're getting. So we are getting 40, 44, uh, which is not right. It did look like we were getting the right output here for our next state. So the issue is uh, it needs to be the boundary minus, right? Is it one indexed? It is one indexed. So this is boundaries Y minus position. So zero is 10. And then our test is passing. Cool. So day 14, part one, dumps out everything. Let's see if we got it. We did get it. All right, always excited to get a star. And now we need to move the rocks to the edges of the platform, spin cycle to do that. Each cycle tilts the platform four times. So that the rounded rocks roll north, then west, then south, then east. After each tilt, the rounded rocks roll as far as they can before the platform tilts in the next direction. After one cycle, the platform will have finished rolling the rounded rocks in those four directions that occur. Here's what happens. Yada yada. 
This process should work for you if you leave it running long enough, but you're still worried about the north support beams to make sure they'll survive for a while. You need to calculate the total load on the north support beams after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that a billion? A billion cycles? In the above example, after that many cycles, the total load is 64. Run the spin cycle for that many cycles. Can we do that? Let's let's start at least by First of all, commenting out our print line so we don't run it 50 bajillion times. Do we have debugs running? We do. Let's comment those out. And then I guess we bench this to see <laughs> how long one takes. 666. What is our median? 500 microseconds. That seems like a lot. If I'm reading that correctly, that is 139 hours. So if we were running in 100 microseconds, it would take 28 hours. It would still take three hours if we were running in 10 microseconds. I don't think we can do that in 10 microseconds. So even if we were running it in a single microsecond, which I don't think I can do, it would still take half an hour. So really we could optimize a bit and try to run it and get it down to, what was it, like three hours or something? So we can't do this. Is there a way to determine how many get dropped into each location? I feel like at some point this has to like even out like at some point it's got a cycle like actually cycle so if we just cache all of these then maybe we should be good really don't love the fact that i don't know if that's true or not and we do have to have a function that does this for every direction so first i guess <laughs> let's write four versions of this rock shift i don't feel like making it generic so i'm just gonna write it a bunch so south then is just zero dot dot boundaries y dot reverse so we go from bottom to top and then these are minus one and minus equals one so this should do south and the ivec new here is going to be uh, zero boundaries dot y minus one and anywhere we have boundaries dot y we want boundaries dot y minus one because we're looking for the edge there and we should never really go below zero but we are working with i32s or i64s or whatever we're going to be working with at the end so it'll be fine so let's print this i suppose i don't want to print static rocks i want to print rock map so that we can see both of them and then i'm going to test a rock shift south uh and i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to do what i just did i don't want to bench it i just want to run the test let's run part two and then we see hopefully the right thing here I guess we could write tests that compare these outputs. That would probably be better. Uh, what is the cycle? North, west, south, east. Okay. This is after a full cycle. So this is after four. Oh, this is four times. Okay. A full cycle is all four of them. So actually it would have been, even if we did get it down to that half hour, it would have been two hours. Ugh. Glad we chose not to do that. So north, west, south, east. So let's not do south first. Let's set up our loop here. I guess this turns into a fold, but we're gonna have to have a cache around. So what is it? Zero dot dot one. Let's do let's do zero dot dot one for now. Intuiter dot fold, right? And our initial value has to be this cache, but we're gonna ignore that for a moment. And I'll do initial value maybe of starting rock map to start with, which means we get an accumulator. We'll call this old map, I guess and iteration we're not going to use that number so when we do this we print the rock map first then we have to do this i guess we'll do zero dot dot four next state is this we print the grid and then next state is our next map and we'll call this final map i guess i don't know final map because that's what we need right the, the final map remember each cycle is four directions okay so we get the rock map the old map and the iteration and our issue is what? Rock map needs to be cloned. Is that accurate? I guess this is going to be old map, right? And then iteration. I guess we can print line something like this. Iter iteration. And then we want to do that. I always forget which direction it's going. So I'm going to do Vs here to point downward. So iter iteration is the next thing. We print the grid. We do the next state. We get our final. We sum it up. Whatever. This test is going to fail. And I'm expecting that but we get our output here on the left and this is the initial and that's the first grid right so we get our first grid which is this starting grid if we go south 
which is not the first direction we need to go. So let's do iteration mod four like that. We match next state is this. So this will be, which one is south? North, west, south, east. So north, west, south, and then east. And this syntax doesn't work because I have all these comments here, but that's fine. We'll take this. This is gonna be north. And let's just pretend for a moment that these are both south too, just for kicks, just to get this working. Semicolon here, iteration mod four. Why is that an issue? Because we don't know what type it is. Not exhaustive pattern, min dot dot equals. Oh, right, because we could potentially have anything else uh, unreachable here. Shouldn't ever be above three. And I guess we keep this number around just in case it is. Okay, so now we're matching on everything. We do first grid and then we do, this is north, right? So north is the right first one. North, west, south. Does south work? It doesn't look like south works. It looks like there's an issue with south. So let's take rock shift north. Let's copy it. Let's paste it. Let's get a rock shift west so that we can test. So if we're shifting west, our first available position is still going to be zero, zero. And we want to go in the X direction first. So this is going to be Y and this is going to be zero Y and this is going to be X. All of these are basically going to be flips of each other. So we rock map get on that position. This is no longer Y plus one. This is X plus one because we're moving left to right along the row. And then potentially next potentially available position is X plus equals one. And I think that feels correct. So let's get West in here, North, West, South. After one cycle, this is after the full cycle, which is really annoying. Unfortunate that they can't give us each of the steps here. Although I guess somebody else probably wrote that in a way that was generic. So this is the first, we go North with everything and then we go West, right? Iter one is West. So this is after, after going North. And this is after going west, but it looks like it's the original after going west. Or actually, it looks like south-ish. What is it doing there? I feel like this is all wrong. So the old map is the next state, which is what we're printing out. So you get old map here, and you get the iteration. So old map, boundaries, static rocks. Static rocks are always in the same place. They don't move. So we north, this is west. Let's clean that up a little bit. This looks right. Maybe I just wasn't looking at the right one. Here's west. Everything looks like it shifted to the left correctly. Should be three, one, two, one. Looks like west is good here. South, I think, is problematic. It doesn't look like it goes in the right direction. Some of them do, but it looks like the edge doesn't. Why would the edge not? Because I didn't do the right positioning. It does look like that's the only one that's an issue. So for south, I didn't go out to zero, it looks like. Well, that's a yikes. I can tell you that's getting cut out of the video because that's a boring debug. Okay, so first grid, back grid, and then we go south and everything's good. And then we have to do, what's the other one? East. So we're going to take west and we're just going to do it again. At which point we need to start at boundaries x minus one, right? And this needs to be boundaries dot x minus one. And then we need to reverse this, right? Because we need to go from right to left. And this is going to be x minus one. And this is going to be x minus equals one. So north, west, south, east. And we end up with this after those. So let's get this into here so that we can compare it to this, which is after one cycle. So bottom is correct. And it looks like we are doing everything correctly. Wonderful. Now running this over and over and over is not going to work well for us. So we need to cache it. I feel like that's going to grow really big. But our static rocks are always going to be the same, so we don't need to cache that. Our boundaries are always going to be the same, so we don't need to cache it on that. I think we need to cache it on the direction that we're going and the map that we have. So the question then is, can we build our cache? So we have a cache and we have the old map, right? And our start is going to be rock map, hash map, new, because we're going to have a brand new hash map. And our cache is going to be, I guess, mutable. And when we do a new hash map here, this is going to be a hash map IVEC2 rock, right? As our key. And then as the value, I guess we also need a direction. So this is actually going to be a tuple of the U size and the hash map. So if we're going in this direction, then we need this hash map for the result. 
is that really what we're going to do here? Are we going to store tuples of U-size and hash maps as the keys and then return hash maps? That feels wild. Is that really what we're going to do? I think it's going to what we're going to try at least. And then we need to do four times the number of cycles that we need to do. So cycles equals one and then what total rounds cycles times four and it's going to be total rounds. So if we have a cycle, total rounds, final map like this, then we should be able to store the results of these. So the next states based on the old maps. So it'll be old map plus direction equals result. So cache dot insert iteration mod four old map next state. And then that's not going to be mutable, is it? Or something like that. So let's see what we've got. Method not found in hash map iter. Iter is not found in hash map. That's weird. 116. Final map dot iter. I guess final map is now like one of the two, right? Insert is still something we need to fix, probably because we have a reference of some kind. Following trait bounds, we're not satisfied. So we could collect this hash map down, I suppose. Is it rock? Is it just rock that doesn't have the eek on it? Insert exists for hash map, but its bounds were not defined. Following trait bounds, we're not satisfied. Can we not hash a hash map? <laughs> or is the issue that we can't hash a rock specifically? Or is it that we can't hash an IVEC2? That would be unfortunate because I really like having the IVEC2s. My guess is it's the IVEC2 at this point. So clone copy partial eek eek derive hash. It looks like we have hash on IVEC2 as long as we're not running on Spur V, which is fine. So then my guess is that hash map doesn't implement hash. Yeah. So if that's the case, we could do something really silly. And we've already got display for rock and the old map can just be a string. <laughs> so we could store this whole string as long as we can put it together rather than doing what we're doing right now. So instead of print grid, let's copy and paste this and we'll do not print grid, but I don't know, collect grid or something or grid to string. And this will return a string capital S got the boundaries. This doesn't actually return a string right now. So this will be zero boundaries y dot map y yada 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 collect into a string. We don't have the new lines yet. I don't think I could, I don't actually think we need the new lines. So boundaries dot y into iter for both of these map over both of them. We're trying to collect into a string and we have flat map. And does that give us what we want? The insert is fine. Let's do grid to string grid to string on old map boundaries trait bound still not satisfied because we still have it typed as such. We also need to see if we can get the cache up here, but this is now instead of that going to be a string expected string found integer arguments to insert or incorrect. Uh, we do still need the direction we're heading in with that string. So that still needs to be there like that. And next state cache and next state. I think next state still needs to be the same thing, right? Uh, borrowed stuff here. Yes, that's fine. Let's go down and move here. We collect all that anyway. It's not an issue. And then new state. I guess it needs to be cloned. We're just going to be allocating a ton of memory here. First grid test process failed. Yada, yada. Do the thing. We do our cache insert. This is what we need to get with. So if cache.get this, right? I guess this can be a match. Match cache.get this. Fill match arms, add reference. This is the cached next state. Otherwise, if it's none, we need to calculate the next one. So we need all of the stuff that we are doing here, but the insert, and that needs to go into this none. And that's probably going to be in the wrong spot. Found type unit pop next state back out of this. So none next state up here. We have cache next state with a, which is a reference. So we want to, you know, like dereference that to make the match and then next state as the return type is what is a variable is available available <laughs> in a different scope in the same function. Uh, that's because we aren't getting this value here. Next state here. I think this needs to be cloned and then hopefully this gives us the right answer because that's a lot. So cycles one total rounds four. final map should be our final map. We print line or we print, I guess, grid, right? Final map. And we need what the boundaries as well. Then we print that grid. And do we get what we needed out of that? We do need a spacer. So let's get our spacer in there. And then this is this what we should end up with after one cycle. 
grab all of these to do the comparisons. So after one cycle, it looks like we are good. Let's try a second cycle then. Two cycles, go. This, get rid of that because one cycle is good. Two cycles, also looks good. Final test that we're gonna be able to do here. <laughs> Third cycle, also looks good. So is there an answer? In the example above, it's this and the total load is 64. Do we think that is even going to run? I'm going to I'm going to cancel that for a second so that we can get this number in. 64 and this needs to be 64 and is this even the right thing to do? Filter map sum total load. I think that's correct. Let's not do that so that we don't print a bunch of stuff out. Let's see if we get any other prints here. Did we leave anything in? Get rid of that. Do we have any debugs here? No, we don't. Let's not cargo watch this. Let's just cargo next test this. Uh, we sh probably should put in a how many we're doing at least. See if we're even on course to finish because I definitely don't have a high level of confidence that this even with the cache is going to work. So cycles is this, right? And number, we're on some iteration. Can I not debug iteration? That, what did I write wrong here? Expected unit found, oh, because I don't have a semicolon. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that runs way faster than we need it to. I do kind of feel like we need to take this and put it in our part two at least. So let's dump that in there. And instead of running this test, which is running way too slow, we run this in release mode and we see how fast it's going. And that is not fast enough, I don't think. That's only seven. I feel like that's still gonna take forever. Unless this starts hitting the cache very hard very soon. I think we should do this also like this. So we get these a little bit slower. Oof. We need to do what, a thousand of these? and they're taking multiple seconds each. So let's do 1000 times, let's say five seconds. It's still, if it takes five seconds to hit each, gonna take an hour and a half. So this is slow. How do we figure out why? Let's get a flame graph going at least. Where's our cache hit? I should remove that debug while I'm doing this. Let's get a flame graph going at least and run it for a little bit and see if we can get anything interesting out of it. I unfortunately think it's just gonna show us that we're in our fold here, but maybe we're not, maybe we're doing something else. This looks like freeing, maybe malloc. Hasher is taking a long time for us. Core format right, maybe I need to optimize our little right string deal. This is our fold, some malloc going on here, some freeing, maybe we need to allocate less in general. Oh, this is all that string, isn't it? Process string. This is all based on that string collection. Maybe that is actually the issue for us, the construction and reduction of that string. So let's try that as a first step. Our grid to string is probably horribly inefficient right now. We do a double four and we get such that we can rock to string. So this is an allocated string. That's an allocated string. Maybe we sw swap this a little bit. Um, instead of doing the display, we do some rock immovable, some rock movable, save, and then let's take a run at this and see if it looks, well, we can't do it like that, unfortunately. We'll call that our first SVG, and then we'll flame graph it again at least. Let it run for a second. Cancel that, get our little thing out here. And now we have a slightly different flame graph. So you can see that the flame graph actually has changed. This is now iterator iter fold, which I guess this string alloc is the same one. It looks a little smaller, but maybe not impactfully smaller. I wonder if we only did that on maybe the positions or something. Don't think this is actually going to run any faster right now. Yeah, almost certainly not any different. Now, I mean, we could get rid of the IVEC 2s, except the IVEC 2s are literally just the size of two I32s. So they really shouldn't be that wasteful. We could use a faster hasher. Format is slow. In any case, I'm confident that this will give us the right answer. I just need to make it faster and do some performance work on it. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now and I will post an update if I get it running faster. One thing that I noticed after instrumenting my cache a little bit, I here I have debug cache hits and every time we hit the cache, I increment that by one, is that it seems for every uh, million iterations, I have about 38 unique states. Everything else hits the cache. So we're using a ton of memory, which is probably slowing it down, but we also probably don't even need to do that because we probably hit a cycle here. We could probably hit that cycle, leap forward 
nine hundred and ninety nine whatever whatever billion uh, iterations, and then cy start cycling once. So I started taking a different approach, and I moved my cache outside of my fold, keeping the same logic mostly because this logic already works. And instead, the first time we hit this cache state, I say we hit the cache at this iteration. Now, we don't have the iteration for which this makes a cycle. I don't know where the first time we saw this was. So I think I'm gonna have to change the shape of my cache such that we can find that index, and then we can use that to do the math to get up to a billion. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. So at iteration 38, we break out of our, our loop and we try to find the start index. So I think that this is a 28 element loop. We do this by storing the iteration maps. I'm keeping my cache around so that I know when we hit it. I don't strictly need the cache anymore, but this is kind of going from code that was meant to do one thing to code that was, or is meant to do another. So we've got these iteration maps stored. So we know the index for every grid that we've seen, and we know when we hit one. I turned our fold into a for loop, and then when we hit the cache, we just stop, and I log out cache hit at, and that's iteration 38. 38 should be divisible by four, right? I guess open question as to what this cycle means then, because 38 is obviously not divisible by four. Um, 28 is though. I think 28 over four is seven, but I wonder if we're even supposed to end mid cycle. So that's an open question that I haven't figured out yet. That makes me think we're doing, makes me feel like we're doing something wrong here. We're doing a bunch wrong anyway. So this is the first time we hit. This is the first position that we hit and re-see it again. So assuming that we are in fact at that cycle here, then we have 28 of a full cycle or not, not 28 of a full cycle, 28 over four, seven full cycles. That's a problem because we have two and a half cycles before that, but we'll deal with that. So then we should be able to take this and go forward with math, find something fairly close, and then go another couple of iterations through our VEC, which we've already established from position, uh, looks like 10 forward to match the billion and then we should just have our result. So we can take this, we can put it into, I think this cache, the way I've set up this cache, we may have to guess the use size, but it'll only be one of four. And then that should be fine. 